Hi everybody, my name is Randy Sharp and I'd like to welcome you to dinner party tonight. Uh, this week we're going to be doing a fish taco dinner which is very simple and easy and it consists of a lovely appetizer of blistered shishito peppers with salt and pepper, what an appetizer. Then we're just gonna have fish tacos with homemade coleslaw, avocados, tortillas. Then we're going to have the most miraculous and easy dessert, bananas tart tatin. And we're gonna have two cocktails, white sangria, who knew? And a little cocktail I invented myself called Quag City Martini. Ooh. So this entire meal you can make in advance or it's easy enough to kind of throw it together four hours or so before they come. The one thing I would suggest making a little bit in advance for sure is the tatin, because if you serve it nuclear, it's caramelized sugar, so it's a little bit, can burn people. So you want to serve it at kind of room temperature. So let's make banana tart tatin. What's a tatin, you say? A tatin is a pie that basically has fruit, caramelized fruit, with a disc of pastry. How did it come to be? Tatin. Tatin, the rumor is, or the legend is, that the Tatin sisters made an apple pie, and they put the delicious apples and everything into the oven, and then they said, oh my God, we forgot to put the crust in the bottom of the pan, so they just took the crust and put it over the apples and tucked it in the side. And they baked it, and that was the first tart. Tatin. This is the most incredible dessert that anybody can make, unless they are a complete moron. This dish has three ingredients, and I'm not kidding you. Bananas, sugar, and butter. The first time I made this, I was like, this is not gonna work. It works, okay? You take four tablespoons of butter, eight tablespoons of sugar, good bananas, and a cast iron pan. Oh, cast iron, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the butter and you're gonna kind of drop it in the pan. I'm not kidding you, this is how you make it. So here's my four tablespoons of butter, which is a half a stick, softened. And I'm kind of dropping it in here. You think, how could this possibly work? So it's gonna look something like that, the bottom of your pan. Then you're gonna slice up some bananas. This is so easy, but don't tell anybody. Because then they'll think you're some kind of genius or a wizard or something. Here's the deal with bananas. Bananas are, I'm not a hippie, but bananas are incredibly hard to digest, which most people don't know, especially if they're not ripe. If your bananas are green on the stick part, don't, you should really wait. If they're green on the banana part, don't eat it because it'll, it, it'll give you a uh, bananas, they're trying to kill me. It'll do that to you. So you want to make them, you know, speckled, uh, not rotten, but speckled, you know, like brownish specks all over and no green stem. Okay, so try and get them yellow the whole way through. Bananas. Mm. Okay, we're going to cut the bananas. This is going in a tart. All right, so you want the slices to look kind of nice. Oops, that one was bigger, but it doesn't matter. Now, the interesting thing is you can use any kind of fruit to make the tata, but I suggest you use fruit that doesn't release a ton of liquid. Like, I made it with peaches and it was delicious, but the, it's, the pastry gets a little soggy, so you wanna try and do it with something that doesn't weep. What you're gonna do is take eight tablespoons of sugar. You're gonna take a little bit of this sugar and kinda sprinkle it over this softened butter. So it, the, the fruit is gonna sleep on a bed of sugar and be covered by a sugar blanket. Just like Leonard. I took about half the sugar. Now because it's dinner party tonight, I'm gonna do this nicely. But I'm telling you, you can do this as messily as you want. So you're gonna kinda overlap these in a nice design all the way around your pan. You gotta line up bananas, bananas in step. You gotta line up bananas, bananas, you bet. You gotta line up bananas, bananas in step. You gotta line up bananas, bananas, you bet. You will impress your friends, I'm telling you.
They'll be like, what, did you buy this at a store? And you'll say, no, we didn't buy it at a store, I made it. This is simple and fairly self-explanatory. <laughs> did these blow up into funny shapes and things? Not unless round's funny. What's that from? Write in your answers. Thanks for all your fantastic notes and letters, guys. I can't tell you what it means to me for your support. Seriously. Okay, I made this sort of pretty and sort of country style. <laughs> There are your bananas. Then you take the rest of the sugar and you cover it in a sugar blanket. <laughs> oh, bananas, you will dream. Oh, bananas, it seems. You'll be a pie for you and I. Oh, bananas, bye bye. <laughs> the pastry force is with you. This is puff pastry. You're not scared you're a dinner partier. This has been defrosted overnight, so it's in perfect condition. I'm opening it. Remember, you peel the paper off. It looks like a, like a ancient scroll or Bible. Or what do they call it? Not Bible, uh, manuscript, I don't know. Something's rectangular. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna roll it out a little teensy bit. Don't leave clumps of raw flour, that's nasty. This is a pretty good piece. And I'll flip it one more time. Don't break! Okay. Put your pan like this. And you're gonna cut a rough circle that's bigger than the pan. Bigger than the pan. And then you're gonna take this little thing, okay? And you're gonna put it over your pan and you're gonna kinda go like this. And then you're gonna try to fold this. This is too big. So try and feel with your hands to the edge of the bananas and fold it so it's like a, almost underneath the side bananas. See that? So you're gonna take it and you're gonna kind of make a, that's the little problem area there. This is too big. And you're, you're gonna make a little like packet with it, which is what the Tatan sisters supposedly did. They were trying to cover up that they forgot, and that's what you're doing. You're gonna, it's gonna look something like that. I made a little egg wash, which is simply an egg beaten in a thing. Uh, you don't have to do this. It makes the pastry shiny. Who's gonna see the bottom? Unknown. But kind of paint your pastry with this. The sides, is what they might see. So kind of focus on the side a little bit. And then some on the top. Wipe the excess egg wash because it, uh, it may make your tatin stick. And then you put this in a 400 oven or 410 until it is dark brown and puffed. So if there's any gap in between assembling it and baking it, you should put this in the fridge because puff pastry is one of the few things that works better straight out of the fridge. Uh, here's our little Tata. He's going in to sleep in a very hot oven. I'm using convection. You don't need convection, but it needs a hot oven. Here we go. Goodbye, little Tata. Don't be scared. You will die. Tandas, tandas, tandas. Oh, that's, oh, that's. oh. Oh. So a brief warning. This is, that sugar is actually dangerous. If, if it touches you, it'll A, stick, and B, it'll really burn you. Just in case of accidentally splashing, which I've done, uh, caramel on you, it's like a nightmare. So um, we're gonna just wait a few minutes. It's already thickening. This is a good one. I made it really good. You'll die. You can serve a tatin plain, uh, or you could serve it with homemade ice cream, which we are gonna do. I'm gonna show you homemade ice cream. We're also gonna serve it possibly with whipped cream plain or cream chantilly, which is a fancy word for sweetened whipped cream. I don't know why they just don't call it that. It's gonna be huge. This is, um, not 100% safe, okay? I 
I'm gently pushing it. It's a little country style. But there is a banana tatin. I'm just cleaning up the excess caramel. You can leave this for as long as you want. You can leave it overnight covered. You cannot serve it like this or you will hurt people. It'll burn their mouths. Because it's, as you can see, it's mostly melted sugar. You can serve this room temperature. I wouldn't warm it up because it'll loosen it again. I wouldn't serve it cold either. Tata. So with the fish tacos, you want to serve stuff for people to put in their taco. And we're going to make coleslaw. Crunchy, zesty coleslaw. I use Savoy cabbage. I bought an organic Savoy cabbage and it's really small, which is okay. But it's also, it's a little more wrinkled. Probably for coleslaw, I would buy the normal Savoy cabbage. But what we're gonna do is get rid of these big leaves because we don't need those. And they're tough. Now it's beginning to look a little more like a Savoy. See how it's ultra wrinkled? That's not what I expected. But anyways, gonna cut this down the center. And you'll see it's like a little tree, like a sad little tree. And you're going to cut out the tree part. So you're just going to go like this. Bink. So it looks like a horse's hoof or a deer hoof. Clippity clappity clippity clap. Cabbage is relatively clean because it's so tight that dirt can't get in there. You'll occasionally find a little, you know, weevil or something in there, but it's pretty clean. You don't have to wash it. And you're going to cut this as thin as you can so that your pieces are like that. Now make sure when you get to the bottom that you don't cut your hands. So you, you might lose a piece like that, which is okay. Take your expertly chopped cabbage, put it in the bowl, and we're gonna do the same thing. Ideally, you could make this the night before, uh, but you can also make it 20 minutes before they get there. When I was a kid, they used to call me the rabbit. Oh, that's delicious, man. Wow, the organic really is flavorful. Now, we're just gonna flavor it. Now, what does coleslaw taste like? Well, it tastes like vinegar. It tastes like salt and pepper. And what else? Not really a lot else. So, I'm going to use some apple cider vinegar. I'm not a hippie, even though I am. Uh, I do drink this, it's quite delicious, and it's very good for your health, apparently. This amount of cabbage, I'm going to go like this. Uh, and I'm going to use this. You can get this at any, in New York, you can get it at any deli on the corner. It's rice vinegar, but it's the seasoned one. I don't know what they put in it. I guess I could look. Not a lot. <laughs> Salt. <laughs> but it's, it's a funny kind of vinegar. It's rice vinegar, which is, um, it has, it's almost lipid. It's almost thick in a way. I'm going to put a little bit of this on. This is slightly sweet also. Tiny bit of salt because vinegar is salty. It's not salty, but it has the same yin or whatever it is. Big cracked pepper, so big pieces. Then we're going to use some pink peppercorns. I'm not going to say what they are because they tease me that I tell you every time. This is just for color. Uh, they are peppercorns, so if you put something like this in, better soak it overnight so that it gets soft. Then I'm just going to stir this around. Take, if you see any bad cuts, take them out. A little bit of lemon. Maybe one lemon. And then a little bit of olive oil just to smooth it out. This, I'm going to taste it. Trust my instinct. Really good. I think it needs a touch more regular vinegar. And it's ready. Now remember, you're, you're serving your tacos with avocado and, and sour cream and all that kind of stuff. So you want, this should be quite um, piquant. It should be bright, very bright. And then you put this in the fridge or put it on the table. You can serve it with tacos. You can serve it with hot dogs. You can serve it with Grilled cheese sandwiches. It's a bright, almost pickled salad. As always, you want to clean your presentation bowl so it doesn't have mess all around the edges, just like this with a paper towel. Make sure there's no 
dirt around the edges. Your coleslaw has been in the refrigerator over, overnight or for at least a couple of hours. It has released a lot of liquid. If you serve it like this, it's fine. But in the bottom of this, there is a lot of liquid. See that liquid? It's a little weird. You don't want to serve it with all that liquid. So what I do is I take my coleslaw and I kind of shake it and I serve it in a second bowl. Even if it's tasty liquid at the bottom of a bowl, it's just nasty looking. You don't want to serve that. But most cardinal rule is you never serve wet salad. That is almost as bad as serving something with grit in it. So there's your beautiful coleslaw. I'm gonna give it a little taste. See if it needs adjusting. Ooh, it's delicious. Let's make the fish for your tacos. Don't be scared. If you've never made fish before, this is the easiest preparation, baked fish. We're just gonna season it and bake it. it. Takes all the fear out of it. Always use the Monterey Bay Seafood Watch app for fish that is sustainable and also humanely caught or farmed. Today we are using hake, which was uh, the, the best alternative at the fish market. And what did we do to our fishmonger? Tip your fishmonger. That's right. So this is uh, hake, which is uh, US wild, not Canadian. The Canadian one is not good. You shouldn't buy it. We're just going to put olive oil on it like this, smooth it in like that. You can really do both sides if you wish. They've taken the skin off, which just makes it slightly easier. It's a huge bone right there. My regular fishmonger wasn't in today. Liberally salt one side, liberally salt the other side. Do you know Citarella in New York was started by a fishmonger? So I recommend Citarella's fish. I think that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna pepper this. I mean, this is it. This is the whole thing. You can't mess this up. And you're gonna pepper both sides like that. And you want it to be flesh side up. If it does have skin, you'll be able to easily take it off the skin after it's cooked. And I'm gonna use some heavy duty tin foil. Do you know most of the tin foil, aluminum foil in the world, do you know where it comes from? You'll be very surprised. It comes from Iceland. Like Reynolds Wrap is Icelandic. And I'm just gonna lay the fish like this. And then for the hell of it, I'm just gonna squirt a little lemon juice on there. In this case, you, the seeds don't matter. So you're just gonna squirt a little lemon juice. I mean, I kind of leave the, I don't know, I leave the squirted lemons. Maybe it makes lemon mist in there, I don't know. And then I'm gonna actually cook this lime like this. And when we squeeze it, it's gonna be very delicious. So I've heated my oven to 400 and I'm gonna cook it until it is translucent, but opaque. <laughs> And when you put a fork in it and move the fork, it'll split apart like a big thick page of a book. It won't mush or you won't have to pull it. That's how you cook fish. Now, this should be used in tacos, not straight from the oven because that's a little weird if it's super hot, but it shouldn't be cold. But you know what? You can serve it room temperature. And I have, and it's, it's kind of light and delightful. You don't, the golden rule is you don't want to serve this hot in a taco. That's a little weird. Do you guys know what chipotles are? They're actually chilies that are fermented and buried in the ground. Isn't that interesting? I love chipotles and I love chipotle mayo. It's an awesome condiment and it's really easy to make. You go out and buy chipotle adobo, which is basically chipotles in a can, and uh, you open the can like this. And you're just gonna try and pour the liquid, not the chipotles. So like, see that? You're gonna try and get that liquid into your mayonnaise without getting a chipotle. Oh yes. And then you're just gonna mix that with the mayonnaise. You ever wonder how they make chipotle mayonnaise? That's how they make it. 
Um, I love this stuff. You know what it's really good on? Sandwiches. I'm just gonna taste it to make sure it's not too hot. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. And this is good with, of course, fish tacos or with um, anything that you would have spicy mayonnaise on. What are we gonna do with the sides? Clean them. That's right. Chipotle mayo. It's lovely. That was my dog. Avocados. More accidents in the kitchen happen from bagels and avocados than any other thing. I read that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut very carefully around, <laughs> that's where it happens, the edge of your avocado. Then you're gonna twist it like this and you break the two sides apart. Everybody knows this at this point, but you go like this and twist it and out comes the pit. There's another spot where you go to the hospital. Look for the part with the little stem and cut that out. And then you're just gonna peel your avocado. If it doesn't peel, it means it's not ripe. You know, the other day I was making, making tacos and I got, bought eight avocados at the supermarket and every one of them was black inside. So I'm not this kind of person, but I just wanted them to know that maybe a box of avocados had been tainted in some way. So I did in fact go and say something. They were very kind and they gave me uh, new avocados, which were superb. Slicing avocados for a taco tray. Basically you wanna give people slices of avocado. Beautiful, thin slices of avocado. And you're going to arrange them like this. Peel the other half. Work, work, work. Hello, boys. Lovely. And then I'm gonna put my Chipotle mayonnaise here like this. I don't like that movie when Harry met Sally. I think it's kind of corny. And I don't like Billy Crystal, but the best line in the movie is when the old lady says, they ask her, how did you know he was the guy to marry? And she said, I know like you know a good melon. How do you pick ripe fruit? Well, part of it's instinct. She knew it was a good melon. Avocados. Um, what you want to look for is yield to gentle pressure, just like myself. So you want an avocado that when you press your thumb in it, it does go in, but it doesn't push in and mush in, and it doesn't resist like a brick wall. So you want it to be pressable, so it leaves a small depression. That's how you pick a good avocado, just like a man. I don't know how to make tortillas. My friend David Schaefer learned how to make tortillas, and man, can he make them good. So if you have a friend who makes tortillas, it's a fun time to have them over. If you don't, many companies make good ones. I like flour, some people like corn, some people like hard shell tacos, I like soft. To make these really special, what you wanna do is take a small amount of butter on a little brush and just gently brush each taco with a little bit of butter. And this you can do when your guests are sitting there. You can sort of talk, la la la, yes, the boy did talk to me. He was very funny and intelligent. He was age appropriate, unlike his girlfriend. And then basically you can do two things. You can quickly put these in the oven and just have them be warm and then stack them up in a bowl with, you know, take a clean dish towel and put it open in the bowl and just stack up your tacos, right? Or you can take this and just kind of set it on top of the gas ring for a second and then just pit, take it off and put it in your decorative bowl. Um, if, you do, if you cook them too long, they become brittle. The fish is ready and I'm gonna show you how we know it's ready. So if you've never cooked fish before, this is the most forgiving preparation. It's for tacos, it doesn't have to be perfect looking, and it's a great way to start your fish experience. What I'm looking for in the fish is when I put the spoon in and I turn the spoon, it flakes apart, like big flakes. See those flakes? They're like flakes of a book, see that? Okay, so you want something like that. See that piece? It's like a book. In this case, because maybe you're scared to cook fish, this is the perfect thing to do because tacos, you have to break it up anyway. So let's get rid of the fish mystery. See, it's gonna flake apart in like leaf-shaped pieces and it's wet, it's beautiful. I'm gonna use this cooked lime, which is extraordinary. Pick up the fish and I'm gonna transport it to the taco tray, like that like this, 
been making a lot of fish tacos this summer. Then I'm just going to take my spatula and I'm just going to break it up a little bit like this. What's a taco without a lime? So you want to take your limes, cut them in half, cut them like this. They're also very beautiful, I think. And I love the smell. They almost smell like perfume. I wish there was a really good lime perfume. There's a couple of good ones, but not really good ones. How beautiful is that? I'm gonna put a little spoon in here. You can also serve it with um, sour cream. Some people like sour cream. A good place to warm your tacos is when your guests are here, you've assembled your tray, you've turned off the oven from the fish, is just put those lightly buttered tortillas in the oven to warm. But don't let them warm too much because they, they crisp. <sighs> oh God. Okay, that was super hot. Delicious buttered warm tortilla. I usually bring them to the table like this so they stay nice and warm, pliable and yummy. And just, you know, elegantly continue to warm them as people assemble tacos. And that is taco night done right. I like to do it this way. A little bit of coleslaw in the bottom. A few pieces of avocado like this. I like to spread them out a little bit. A little bit of fish. Oh, look at that. Freshness and beauty abounds. A little bit of chipotle mayonnaise. And then you're just gonna fold it like that and chow it down. Yum, 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 Mr. Taco. Lend me some taco. Boom, 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 boom. I like a taco. That's a fact. Boom, 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 boom. I like a taco anytime. A little taco, it's just fine. Shishito peppers. One of many cute appetizers you can put out. Just blister them in a pan with salt and pepper and olive oil. Uh, other great appetizers are pickled shrimp, just salami and cheese trays. Nice, put it on a tray, don't serve it out of the pack. Lovely, beautiful plates of appetizers, one of which could be shishito peppers. They're not hot, you can get them at a good farmer's market, or actually Fresh Direct has them. They taste like small green peppers and occasionally you'll get one that's a little bit spicy. At my farmer's market they call them one in tens because one in ten is spicy. But my friend Edgar decided they were called one in tens because one is poison. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna leave the stems on just like this, and we're just gonna put a little olive oil. Then we're going to salt them as if we were gonna eat them now. A little bit of cracked pepper. We're gonna use the stove top today, but you can also make them on a grill. The grill is easier, but you need a grill basket. In this case, you do not do because uh, there's olive oil on it and you want to blister them in the pan. I'll just tell you this little funny thing. The automatic clicker lighters on all stoves in the entire planet and universe break. You'll end up using one of these. I don't care who made your stove. So several people have written in inquiring about these aprons, okay? These aprons are made by a company called Rough Linen, like roughlinen.com. It's run by a woman. She's a complete genius. They have sheets, they have curtains, they have dishcloths, and they have these very cute aprons that are called pinafores, which is an English name because she's English. It is one of the best companies in the United States, in my opinion. I'm gonna take these shishitos and I'm gonna put them in this very hot cast iron pan. You can do it with any pan you have. They should make a noise. And I'm just gonna shake it around a little bit. And I'm gonna kind of let them do their thing in there until they're what they call pan blister, which means they'll have black spots on them. You want a nice high heat. They have a lot of water, so if you get smoke, you really burned them. I've never done it this way, so I don't know how long it takes. <laughs> they should be served slightly warm, but essentially you could do this when they're here because it's cute, it's like a cute little job. You know what I mean? Here's an example of one that is blistered. That's pan blistered. So these are beautifully pan blistered. I'm just gonna take a pair of tongs and just arrange them. I don't usually tip them onto the plate because it can, can sometimes tip the plate or it can 
put a lot of oil on the plate. You don't want these to be too oily. Finishing touch. You want to arrange these with a little bowl for people to put the stems in. Otherwise, they don't know what to do. And what I like to do is eat one. Oh, 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 and put the stem so they know what it's for. A little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of salt. I grow these, uh, I also grow these, and it's really amazing. These are very good. A little bit of pepper. And this is a true appetizer, you know? Like it's the perfect thing to make you want to eat more food. A little lemon wedge. People know that they can squirt more lemon on if they so desire. These are superb shishito peppers. One is poison. Leonard just got back from a long walk in the New York City heat wave. If he was a person, he'd enjoy some ice cold sangria with his fish taco. When I was a kid, sangria was disgusting, sweet, cheap red wine with canned or jarred fruit in it. It ain't that way no more, mamacita. I'm gonna make a small batch of white sangria. If you're gonna use red sangria, please use a light, nice, bright wine. Don't use a big Bordeaux, obviously, or something sweet, please. You're gonna put fruit in it. So we're going to use organic fruit uh, because it's not impregnated with uh, pesticides that will leach into your sangria. That's not chic. Uh, I also washed it gently with soap and water and then rinsed it and dried it because uh, it's gonna be sitting in alcohol and it's possible that uh, any uh, dirt from either the customers in the store, who I hear are worse than the people who unpack the fruit, and I believe it, have on their hands. You don't want that in your sangria. So this is washed. Cutting some very beautiful pieces of grapefruit. You want circles and halves depending on the size of your container. Mostly halves if your container is small. I'm gonna use blackberries. Oh, they're gonna turn the wine red. Yeah, they are. Then I'm gonna use an organic orange. These are hard to find. Fresh Direct has them right now, but... Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? I'm gonna cut these in half so people can fish them out and chew them if they want. You can put cherries, bald cantaloupe, watermelon balls, grapes, but if you have dogs, remember some dogs can be killed by eating grapes, so don't, I, I don't buy grapes because I'd rather not take the risk. I'm now going to pour the wine in. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. This is $9, and it is so delicious, I can't even tell you. Al Verdi Pinot Grigio. This is the bomb, $9.99, so it's really $10. The other benefit of this is that you make this and you put it in the fridge and you're not stuck making cocktails for these people. I'm gonna put a few more berries on top, like that, and I'm gonna put a little sprig of mint in there. I'm gonna kinda crush them in my hand a little bit so they release their juice. You can squeeze a little bit of the grapefruit juice in. You can serve this with a wooden spoon just in the container so that people can just hold the fruit back when they pour it. It's very simple, it's chic, I'll show you. Serve it like that so that people, then they just hold it back when they pour it. I'm going to show you a cocktail I invented. It's a variation on a martini. I'm sure it's already been invented. I call it a Quag City martini. I always say, to you guys, don't make cocktails because you get held up making cocktails, unless you have a designated cocktail person at your party. It's always good if you want to serve a cocktail, because people kind of love that, is to ask a friend who's maybe staying at your house or something to be the cocktail person. This cocktail is suited for that. You're going to get some ice cold vodka, ice cold cocktail shaker, and an ice cold piece of ice. You know how James Bond says, shaken, not stirred? Do you know why he says that? Because martinis are always stirred. He's saying that because he's 007. Everybody else is stirred. His is shaken. We're gonna shake it. The, um, the golden rule is if it's all liquor, it's stirred, because it bruises the liquor or something, I don't know. If it's liquor and some other thing, you shake it. Ours is kind of liquor and some other thing. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pour in a boatload of vodka. And guess what else we're gonna use? Hey everybody, martinis have vermouth. People just want chilled vodka. Martini is a cocktail, it has vermouth in it. If you don't want a martini, just have chilled vodka in a pointy glass, okay? If you want a martini, it has vermouth. 
I like a wet martini. I'm gonna stir it a little bit. And now I'm gonna quag city it. I'm taking a jar of jalapeno peppers. I'm pouring into the drink about this amount of jalapeno juice. Perfection. Close up the cocktail shaker. What does James Bond say, Lenny? Shake and not stir. Right, you wanna shake it to the beat of Saturday, S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y, night. <laughs> so you wanna shake it until you can barely hold it, which is now for me. Mine has a strainer. You're gonna take your glasses out of the freezer. These are Nick and Nora's. They're based on two characters of the Thin Man movies. And you are going to pour in your Quag City Martini, which is pale green. And you're going to garnish it with a slice of jalapeno, pickled jalapeno. I grow jalapenos and I pickle them and they're bright green and they look so amazing in here. Quag City Martini. This is not a joke. It's one of the best cocktails in the world. a little bit spicy. Try that, boys. We made a beautiful, bright coleslaw with pink peppercorns and apple cider vinegar. We had warmed tortillas with butter. We had delicious baked fish with lime, fresh avocados, and chipotle mayonnaise. What a taco. Blistered shishito peppers with salt and pepper and lemon. Bright piquant uh, appetizer. And for dessert, Gorgeous banana tatin served with chantilly cream or ice cream. Beautiful sangria bursting with citrus fruit and blackberries. Ice cold Quag City martinis, a little bit spicy in the back of the throat. So from everybody here at dinner party tonight, we wanna to say thank you again so much for watching the show, for commenting, for asking questions. I can't tell you what it means to me. Leonard and I really enjoy reading and answering your questions. So, why not have a dinner party tonight? Hi guys, I just wanted to let you know that my dear little dog Vivian, Leonard's wife, died about three weeks ago at home, in her bed, in her sleep, with me and Leonard by her side. She was truly one of the greats. And for every time you see her on old episodes or when you look at pictures of her, just remember there was a thousand moments that you don't see when she supported me, loved me, and took care of me for the eight years that I was lucky enough to have known her.